Okay, wait a minute. These people agree with the Sunshine Exchange guy that long-term manipulation is unlikely. All right, so that's it. Manipulation of gold and precious metals markets. I, I guess it does happen. Hi guys, it's Gene here. Today's question is, can gold and other precious metals prices be manipulated, and if so, how? It will be no surprise to anyone that there are a bunch of different answers. But today is September 4th, and everything tanked yesterday and today. The stock market crashed, gold crashed, silver crashed, Bitcoin crashed, Ethereum crashed, any crypto you want to name crashed, and by no small amount, it was a bloodbath. There was an awful lot of anxiety, and it continued through today, and by the end of the day today, maybe some of it kind of stabilized, but it could get a lot worse. The first thing I want to bring to your attention is this article at sunshineprofits.com. He says, look, academic research did not find any clear evidence of gold price suppression. Moreover, when we look at the long-term behavior of gold prices, we see clear cyclical patterns, not a permanent downward trend. And he says, therefore, from the long-term perspective, and especially looking at the 2000s, it is hard to understand the accusation of manipulation in the gold market. The cries of suppression are extremely selective. When the gold price is going down, then this is the obvious effect of evil conspirators. But when the gold price is rising, then there is no manipulation and the true market forces are at work. He goes on to conclude, Bottom line is, despite many variations of the theory of manipulation of the gold market, their supporters hardly offer any proof. Just as with other assets, there are both bull markets when the price of gold goes up, as well as bear markets when the price of gold goes down. Just because there's a bear market doesn't imply that there's deliberate suppression of the prices. And then he goes on to say, we encourage you to learn more about the gold market by signing up for our newsletter. And sorry for being sad. I don't know if it's a he or a she. Let's see who wrote it. Doesn't say. Now, this guy says, if Forbes, now this is a he. This is Frank Holmes writing in 2019. So last year he's like, heck yeah. And, and uh, so he says, gold suppression, it's not a question of if, but to what extent? He says, he says the complete opposite. He says, first of all, let me say that gold price suppression is not just a conspiracy theory. It's a well-documented phenomenon with real actors and real ramifications. He says in 2014, Barclays was fined nearly $44 million for failing to prevent traders from manipulating the London gold fix. Late last year, I guess that means 2018, former, a former JP Morgan trader pleaded guilty to manipulating the U.S. metals markets. And then he says, remember the gold futures flash crash of 2014? And then he goes on to say that the best people to speak about on this subject are the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, GATA. I bet they say GATA. So anyway, I go to there, GATA.org, and it says, let's see, about us. The Gold Antitrust Action Committee was organized in the fall of 1998 to expose, oppose, and litigate against collusion to control the price and supply of gold and related financial instruments. The committee arose from essays by Bill Murphy, an internet financial commentator on lemetropolecafe.com and by Chris Powell, a newspaper editor in Connecticut. Okay, so or let's say it's happening. How are they doing it? Let's go back and hit this article right here on zerohedge.com. And they say the number one way they do it is by selling naked shorts. I don't know what that means. Uh, Paul Craig Roberts and Dave Kranzel have claimed that the New York Comex Exchange is the Fed's primary venue of Fed manipulation activities. The biggest Comex players include H HSBC, JP Morgan, and Bank Nova Scotia, which jointly account for a large portion of the exchange's trading volume. Comex futures trading takes place through a system known as Global which can be accessed by any trader with a computer-based futures trading platform. In addition to COMEX, the Fed also manipulates gold prices in the much bigger London gold market where daily transactions exceed $24 billion. Selling naked shorts simply means that the Fed short sells gold without first borrowing it, or at least ensuring that the metal can be borrowed, as is the usual short selling practice. The Fed presumably does this to protect the dollar and enable banks to repurchase gold at lower prices. Okay, so this is just something they don't even apologize about doing. Okay, and then here they say Roberts and Kranzel cite at least three instances when they were, they were able to detect such suspicious activity on the COMEX exchange. 
The first time was in January 6, 2014. After rallying $15 in the Asian and European markets, gold prices suddenly plunged $35 at precisely 10.14 a.m. After more than 12,000 contracts, more than 10% of the day's trading volume were sold in the space of less than 60 seconds. The volume of the sale is what gave it away as a blatant naked short selling. 12,000 contracts represents 1.2 million ounces of gold, about three times the total amount of gold that was available in Comex vaults at the time. The style, too, is highly suspicious. A bona fide trader looking to sell up a large position would normally try to carefully work off their position over an extended period to disguise their selling activity and also avoid interfering with prices as much as possible. The dumping of such a huge position in such a short period of time is a deliberate ploy to drive down gold prices. So whereas that guy at Sunshine Exchange was saying Big banks don't represent a big enough chunk of the highly liquid gold market to do any in influential manipulation. These guys are saying it's the United States Federal Reserve that, that are doing it. They cite another time. This time was on the Globex. On December 18, 2013, huge volumes of COMEX gold futures were sold in several waves via Globex immediately after the Federal Open Market Committee announced its decision to trim its bond purchases by $10 billion a month. The funny thing is that this happened at a time when the Globex computer trading system is least active. All this selling activity was done presumably to present the prevent the announcement of tapering from sending the dollar, stock, and bond markets into a tailspin. And then to cap off their argument, they point out that central banks have on several occasions failed to honor their obligations when called upon by nations at their time of need, thus suggesting a depletion of gold bullion at their vaults. For instance, in 2014, the Fed negotiated a seven-year timeline to ship back Germany's 1,500 tons of gold, suggesting it didn't have the full amount in its possession at the time. Incidents such as these tend to lend credence to the theory of selling naked shorts. Although they agree, okay, wait a minute, these people agree with the Sunshine Exchange guy that long-term manipulation is unlikely. All right, so that's it. Manipulation of gold and precious metals markets. I, I guess it does happen. I wonder if that's what happened yesterday. I couldn't find anything in the news about it. Thanks for watching.